we are in the darkroom. The darkroom is where we do a lot of preparation in the screen printing process. We take our frames, we clean them, we coat them with stencil or emulsion, we expose them, wash them out, and then many times after we're done printing, we'll clean them in here and we'll reclaim them in here for future use. Now a darkroom many times scares people. First of all, let's ask, what is a darkroom? A darkroom for screen printing purposes is an area, it doesn't have to be a room as big as this, but it, you want it to be an area that's blocked out from any UV light. UV light is what exposes the screen. So if you have UV light coming in through a window or through a fluorescent bulb or through an incandescent bulb, that's going to be prematurely exposing your screen before you actually go to expose it and rinse it out. So this is an important part of a dark room. It needs to be light safe. Now obviously, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a scary photographic dark room that a lot of people get scared of during the screen printing process because photographic dark rooms you can barely see in they're very, very light safe, and if you open a door, the whole process is ruined. Emulsion is not that light sensitive, so obviously you can see me in here, but yet I'm in a light safe environment. There's a many ways to make sure that your darkroom is light safe. Now you can turn anything into a darkroom. You can use a bathroom, a closet, a laundry room, a bedroom, or even a dedicated room like this that you may build. But there are certain components and basic components that you want in your darkroom, and that's what we'll go over now. The first major component of a darkroom or need of a darkroom is ensuring that it's light safe. There's a couple simple ways to do that. First, you want to block out any UV light or bright light from coming in the room. So if it has bright lights in it, you would want to turn the lights off or put shades over the windows. Then to make a light safe room so you can see in, what you can do is you can use a yellow light safe bulb in a simple lamp fixture like this. We turn the bulb and this gives us light to see. So this is what I would use if I was in a dark room that would be used for multiple purposes, such as a bathroom. I'd simply shut the door, turn on the light so I could see what I'm doing, and then go about my business. Now, if you're setting up a dark room for more of a long-term use and a dedicated dark room, there's some easier things you can do so you don't have to worry about turning stuff off and using that room for multiple purposes. First thing that is great to use in a dark room is a product called Ruby Lift. Ruby Lift is a UV blocking film that was actually used to create positive films earlier on in the screen printing process. This film blocks out any UV light. So if you have windows in your darkroom, like you see in our darkroom over here, you can actually put this film up over your windows and allow light to come through, but block out all the harmful UV light. If your darkroom has fluorescent lights in it, we have available fluorescent tube covers that actually slip over your lights and block out all the harmful UV rays coming out of the fluorescent bulbs. This is great because it allows a lot of light to come through, but you don't have to worry about any fluorescent light which actually has UV rays in it pre-exposing your screens. This is actually the way we light safe our darkroom. You notice the lights up here? They all have fluorescent tube covers over them exactly like this. They're fairly cheap and they last a long time, so it's a great way to fortify your darkroom if you're using a dedicated darkroom. The next important part of a darkroom is making sure you're in a dry environment. Emulsion, when it's coated on a screen, is about 70 to 80% water. So in order for that emulsion to dry, that water has to evaporate out of the screen. If you have a screen that's wet, this is a screen that's ready to expose, but the emulsion's already dry on it. It should feel uh, smooth like plastic. If it's sticky still, that means all the water's not evaporated out of the emulsion on the screen. So it's very important to have a very dry dark room. Now you can do that if you live in a dry area of the country pretty much by just using a normal room. However, if you're in a more humid part of the country, what you want to do is get a dehumidifier like this. Your optimal humidity in a dark room should be below 40% or even optimally 30%, 30-35% um, 30, humidity. If it's higher than that, that won't allow the water to evaporate out of the emulsion and you'll have a lot of hard problems during the exposure process that will show during the troubleshooting section later. So it's very important to have a dry room, and if you are in a humid part of the country, like down south or whatever, you do want to get a small dehumidifier to make sure that happens. I'll just slide my screen right back into my screen rack, which is actually the next part I'm going to talk about. Screen racks are a very important part of a dark room. They're used to dry screens once they've been degreased, they're used to dry screens that have emulsion on them, and they're used to dry screens once the screen's been exposed and needs to dry from that water that used to wash out the screen. Screen racks are also great places to score screens, so they're a very important part of the dark room. You can get screen racks that stack on top of each other, or you can even build your own, but you do want a place to put your screens inside the dark room so that you have a proper storage area. This is very important, especially if you're making a dedicated dark room. 
The next thing we see next to our screen racks is fans for air circulation. If you don't have a fan in your dark room, whether you're setting up a dedicated dark room or even a small room like a bathroom, your screen will take a lot longer to dry. A screen with a fan in front of it will dry in about you know, two hours at the most. Without a fan in front of it, it could take over a day to dry, even if it dries at all. So having fans in front of your screen racks in your dark room or in front of the area where you're drying screens are important. This is kind of a luxury in a dark room, but it's something that if you are setting up a de dedicated dark room, you do want to have. This is a light table. We use this light table to set up our screens, to check for pinholes once our screens have been exposed, and to then tape our screens out. So a light table allows you to see through the screen without exposing it. It's great for pre-registering screens, and if you're doing a dedicated dark room that's set up for production, having a light table is very, very important. Right over here, we see our exposure unit. The exposure unit, depending on the type of exposure unit you have or your exposure area, this is where you expose your screen and then that actually develops the image area. Now, the exposure unit should be away from your water source, which we'll talk about next. We don't want water splashing out in our exposure unit, but obviously this does need to be in a light safe area as well. Obviously, before we expose the screens, we first have to prepare them. So you do want some type of table in your dark room used to preparing screens place where you can set your chemicals, your emulsion, and then even if you're using a coating stand or something like that, you can set that on to then coat your screens on. So after the screen's been coated, dried, registered, exposed, let's go over to our washout sink. Now this washout sink is used a lot in the dark room. We have washout sinks that start at 30 inches wide and go all the way up to eight feet wide and bigger for very high production shops. This one is 48 inches wide and it's backlit. I'll show that. A backlit washout sink enables you to see what you're doing in a light safe environment so that you can easily tell that your image is washed out and your screen's clean. Uh, otherwise, if without a backlit unit, sometimes it may be a little bit hard to see, especially if your dark room is not as bright as this one. So with a washout unit, you do want a couple things next to your washout sink. The first one is you want to make sure that your washout sink has water running to it. Now, this is just a standard hose, and we use this hose for the degreasing process and for some of the washout process. You can get by with using a standard hose, but it's always good to have a pressure washer. Now, you can use a small pressure washer like this. This is a small cartridge that you can get for about 100 bucks, and that pressure washer enables you to really clean your screens well, wash your images out properly, and then in the cleaning process of actually when you're washing your screens out and reclaiming them, this is really, really needed. If you don't have a pressure washer during that process, it can be very difficult to then reclaim your screens. So right here we have an optimal setup with two sources of water, a standard hose, and then a pressure washer. Another good thing to have in a washout sink is a stand. The stand helps you keep the screen out of the dirty water so when you're degreasing it with clean water, it doesn't get dirty water splashing back up into it. And then finally, optimally, if you're using a dedicated dark room, it would be nice to have some air in it. Air helps you blow out screens, blow out the water out of screens, and uh, do some of the cleaning process. So we have an air hose with a little air nozzle for that process as well. So this is your basic washout sink setup, and you do also want an area to store chemicals. Right here we have something set up underneath the washout sink or to the side of it. One thing to keep in mind with your washout sink, you want that away from where your screens are being prepared and dried and from your exposure area. If it sticks right next to it, then the water splashing out of this can contaminate the clean screens or the exposed screens before you actually want to wash them out in the sink. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're doing a lot of washout, you're going to be creating a lot of mist and a lot of humidity. So if you're a high volume shop and you plan on doing a lot of work in your dark room, you might want to even separate the washout sink from the rest of the dark room. In a small production area, that wouldn't really matter if you're a small shop or a manual shop getting going. You can have them in the dark room as long as it's separated from the rest. But if you are a large shop, you probably want to put another wall up or a section to keep the wet part out of the dry part. 
The final part of the darkroom we'll talk about is a dip tank. Now this dip tank is used for reclaiming screens. We'll show that later in the process, but typically it'll sit right next to your washout sink.